Okay, so get this story. What started out as an athletic program to help special needs kids has turned into an organization that has inspired thousands of children and volunteers. We're talking about the nonprofit organization SNAP, and its co founder, Zach Sertner, says the reason it's been so successful is because they threw away the old way of doing things and let kids teach kids. What up, Zach? Hey, Zach, doing, great to have you. Do it with me, Rush. SNAP. <laughs> Thank what you. Is, it's wonderful to be here. Well, what does SNAP stand for? SNAP stands for Special Needs Athletic Programs. Special Needs Athletic Programs. How did that start? Um, so that started after my dearest family friend was diagnosed with autism, and we just saw the struggles that he went through on a daily basis. And my brother and I, who founded it with me, we just knew that we needed to make a difference. So how is SNAP making that difference? Um, so SNAP runs six nights a week. Um, we do sports, we do art, music, just different things that tie into each kid's ability because that's SNAP's motto is finding the ability in every kid rather than the disability. Oh. And that's definitely one of the strongest things that we have because each kid, if they're not good at sports, then they can do the art program, so they can do the homework or the tutoring. For someone who's kind of on the outside, does special needs mean autistic or mentally disabled? Special needs for us means everything. A lot of programs only cater to autistic kids or children in wheelchairs, but the best part about SNAP is that we don't turn anybody down. We accept anybody who writes us an email and says, we need a program for our kid, what can you do? You're doing this thing, SNAP, but what, what are you trying to accomplish? Like what's, what's the messages you want your, your, your pals to know? Um, the message that I just want to get across is that they are the same and they can do everything that we're able to. Just like I'm bad at some things and I'm good at some things, it's the same as they. They can do things better than me, I can do things better than them, and that we need to accept them in our community because the numbers of autism is growing. One out of 64 children are diagnosed with autism each year. Um, and it's just amazing to see how these numbers are growing from 50 years ago into the future and that they are going to be a part of our society and we can't keep on throwing them out. Everybody's the same. I mean, the only difference between me and somebody with special needs is the way their brain functions. Talk about how this has reached into combating bullying. Um, I've gotten talking to the principals and they're saying after these trainings that you're doing, um, there's no bullies in our school. Because what's it teaching? Because it's teaching empathy and compassion and showing that how difficult it is to have a disability as well as getting bullied at the same time. So let's do this little demo because I think this is going to really like drive the point home. Visually, to you guys watching at home, we need two volunteers, right? So Katie, we have our assistant Katie who's going to come sit here you. next to, do it with right. me now. Ready? And snap. This is snap. All right, so what you guys are going to do here, um, you're going to put the socks on your hands um, and the goggles on your eyes. And these are to simulate a dexterity problem as well as a vision impairment. And what you guys are going to try and do is untie your shoelaces and tie them again and I see can't how. See anything? Oh my gosh! It's really All right, nice. guys, here we go. So how does that feel, Raj? I, can you even find? Can you feel my the shoelaces? Eyes might as well even? be closed. I, I, but can you feel it in, in within the sock, Katie? Can you feel the shoelaces? I can feel it, but I can't do anything about the knot with the socks on my hands. So, Zach, when, when people do this exercise, what do they report to you? That it, um, Obviously, it's difficult. It's definitely really frustrating for them, and everything is so much harder to do. And then the best point that we can get across is a lot of these kids have to wake up so much earlier than you to get ready for school, or their parents still have to get them dressed. To work in the time. To work in the time to be able to do everything. Raj, can you even see what you're doing? No, this is frustrating because I'm getting the sock in my shoelace when you're in the shoes, then you see how frustrating it is. A lot of the people that go through the simulation say, no, I give up. And then I remind them that these kids live with this disability. And that's the really jaw-dropping moment is once they find that out. Yeah. All right, guys, take off your goggles. That was really difficult. Okay. Hand over your socks. Actually, you know what? Keep your socks on. You have another demo. Let's yes, really up the ante here because if that didn't already convince you, what it's like to be in somebody else's shoes and behind their eyes. Let's go to the other demo because it looks like you're going to add another sense, the balance yes, sense. Yes, we are. All right, let's head over to there, Katie and Raj, oh. and I'm going to change my seat so I can get a better view. And now, here we have these two, I guess, balance balls, <laughs> and you're going to have them now. Yeah, so you guys are going to try and balance on these different balance beams um, to, simu to simulate cerebral palsy as well as try and have a catch here All right, go. I'm going to come over here because I want to get a good, good view of this. All right, guys, are you ready? Yep. Yes. In three, two, one, balance. Can it... What's that like? For, obviously, Raj hasn't quite gotten there. 
Katie? Hold that oh, this is you hard. You managed to get on, but what does it feel like? It keeps moving back and forth, and it's really nope. hard just to stay balanced. Raj, do you need a hand? Nope. nope. <laughs> so balancing, seeing where you are, oh. knowing that you can't really feel the Hold details on. of it with your hands. Look, Raj is still even just trying to manage the balance. Yeah, we so just want to. At this point, what would you be telling your, your <laughs> trainees? Um, well, now we'd be telling them to give them a hand because that's the next thing that we have All to right. do. So Raj is now not okay, only. Raj got it. Now right. let's add let's add something to the mix nope. that complicates oh. it. Look what Zach has in his hands, yo. Raj, look. Hold on, I got this. <laughs> Katie, check this out. Okay. Can you grab the ball? Now you're gonna play catch with Raj. Oh, uh, oh. all right, we got this. This is powerful stuff, Zach, that you created this. This is one of how many activities you have in the program. This Whoa. is. Hey, I, I, I'm ball girl, ball girl. <laughs> this, this is, is impossible. Act, yeah, it's Zach. really hard. And this is actually one of six activities that we have that, that, that go all the way from balance problems all the way to coordination and vision. <laughs> so this is impossible. It's really hard. Yeah, Kay, I was just going to ask you, Katie, what did you think of that? It was so hard because every time you stand up there and you think, I got this, you fall down. And you're not even trying to then coordinate the next thing, which is playing catch. Yeah. But then, as Zach said, you're doing this all day. This I is know, I, I literally life. cannot believe yeah. how so difficult it was. Do you think that when people see this and they experience this, that it's making a difference to your, your pals? Um, definitely, because now when we see these kids in gym class and they're struggling to kind of keep their balance, then they understand that, oh, maybe they need a hand. That is fantastic. Your website is? www.snapclinics.org. Snap Clinics, there you go. Oh, we, we, you can't snap, you guys, but I can. <laughs> Snapclinics.org, it's fantastic. Thanks for coming Thank by. You. Thank you so You're much. You're doing such great things.